This video is going to be an in-depth look at using textures inside Photoshop. So I'll just kind of dive in here and show a few different things to kind of think about when you're working with these. And I'm using textures just like this one right here that you see on the screen. And this is how I personally tend to create textures, almost always in black and white because it provides a whole bunch of different options to work from. So the first step you're going to want to do working with the texture with the methods that I'm showing here, you're going to want to make sure it's in black and white. And to do that, you can go to image and then adjustments and either desaturate, or if you want a little bit more control, go to black and white. And also something you could do here to get a little bit more fine tuning for your texture, you can go to image, adjustments, and then brightness and contrast. And you can play around with the actual contrast of the image. Now I've already contrasted this quite a bit, but if I bring this all the way down here, you can see it looks a little bit more muddled, where if I pump it all the way up to max, you get a little bit more of a stark texture. And this will really depend on the kind of texture you're using. Like if it's a really harsh lined black and white, this won't do anything. But if you're dealing with a, a watercolory or a very soft one like this, you might have a little bit of a variation in there you can play around with. And probably the absolute easiest way you can give this white textured background a nice transparent look. Like underneath here, I have this tan colored block just to show this. Just change the layer mode and make sure your layers window is open. And that's window and then layers right around the middle and select your texture layer. It's called layer zero for me. And we're gonna change the blending mode from normal to multiply. And multiply will instantly make the white invisible and let the dark show through. So as you can see here, just changing that from normal to multiply very quickly gave us a transparent background here. Although if you look at this layer, it's still all white, but we can now see through it. And you can also bring up hue saturation, which is control U on a PC or command U on a Mac, and go ahead and hit this colorize button in the lower right hand corner here. And you can see it's applying a color to this texture. So I usually tend to kick up the brightness just a little bit and then play around with the saturation and hue until I get a color that I think works particularly well on the particular color I'm working with. I personally tend to prefer hue saturation because I really enjoy the very subtle way you can kind of manipulate saturation and the actual hue as well as the lightness colors to kind of give your textures a different look. It allows for a lot of flexibility. And a lot of times when you're dealing with textures, you want to make very subtle tweaks to kind of make sure that it's fitting the overall feel for what you're trying to achieve. I'm just going to cancel out of this though and set this back to normal. Cause I'm going to show another way you can give this a transparent background where you actually completely remove the texture from the back and you end up with a, a very pure texture that's just the actual texture elements. And when if you're dealing with something like screen printing, that's really the way you want to be doing things. You don't want a white layer behind it and overlay using a blending mode because in separation that can be a real pain sometimes. So with the texture selected, I'm going to go to channels and it's right next to layers on your layer palette window here. And since this is a black and white, I can actually just select the RGB channel. And to do that, I'm going to hold control on a PC or command on a Mac and then just click the RGB layer. So you can see right now it's selecting and it's actually selecting all the white. So with this still selected, if I were to go into layers right here, turn off this, as you can see here, I'm going to turn off this layer, making a new one. And then I'm going to hit D just to bring up black as my primary color. And then I'm going to hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac. And while holding that, I'm going to hit the backspace or delete button. In doing so, you can see that it went ahead and filled in an inverse of the original texture right here. So you can see right here is basically what used to be black is now white and what used to be white is now black. But the cool thing, if I turn off this background, you can see the transparency through it, which will become really helpful for using masks, which will be the next part of this. But just to do this once again, I'm going to turn back on this layer, go to channels, hold control on a PC or command on a Mac and hit the RGB layer. And remember, this only works if you're in black and white or grayscale. If you're in a colored image, you can actually select the red, green or blue and pick whichever one you think works best and that'll automatically basically desaturate it for you. But this time I'm going to go back to my layers, turn off the original and make a new layer. And with the marquee tool selected, which on your keyboard is M as a keyboard shortcut by default, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to hit select inverse. So this time if I hold down alt or option on a Mac and hit backspace or delete, you can see that it fills in just like the original texture. So if I turn off this new transparent texture, turn on the original one, you can see that they're a perfect match. And what's really cool about working like this is what I'm going to dive in right next with this window right here. So here I have a piece of art that we're going to be working on. I'll zoom in just a little bit. So we have a basic design going on right here, as well as a few different textures, all of which have transparent backgrounds. There's this one, there's this one with this little bit of a rusty color, and then there's this other background texture, and then one more background texture. So we're going to apply textures to this original art right here. There's a ton of different ways you can play the textures, and one way you can do it is to actually use your original, and it's important that it has a transparent background like this one does here. It makes selecting things a million times easier, so make sure you do give it a transparent background. I'm going to hold control on a PC or command on a Mac and select this artwork layer right here, and then I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to pick one of these overlay textures. I'm just going to pick this kind of pinkish reddish one right here, 
And with that layer selected, I'm going to hit this button in the bottom here. It looks like a rectangle with a circle right in the middle, and it's Add a Layer Mask. So as you can see, that very quickly turned this texture and masked out our original image of type right here with this rust kind of color. So I'm going to bring that above to be the top. And now if I turn on the original type layer right here, you can see that that rusty texture is now overlaying the actual white. And you can do this in basically the opposite way as well, where let's say I have a texture right here that I want to apply to this type and just knock it out. So if I hold control on a PC or command on a Mac and select my texture, I can go to the type layer. I'm going to turn it on so we can actually see what we're doing here. And I'm going to hit that layer mask button right here again. And once again, that looks like a rectangle with a circle right in the middle. Just click that. And you can see that now. And if I turn off the background, you can tell this is totally transparent. We have the actual texture knocking out the type or whatever design you happen to be working with right here. And with this layer mask selected, as you can see, it's selected right here. Like right now, I'm selecting a layer. Here, I'm selecting that actual mask. If you hit Control I on a PC or Command I on a Mac, It'll inverse your selection, which will give you a little bit more flexibility with your textures in case you want to flip back and forth, or even use the same texture, one inverted, one not, kind of maneuver them around. It really gives you a ton of flexibility when you're working, which can be very, very helpful. And another little trick here, and it's part of what makes working with masks really great, is you can actually manipulate the mask. And as always, I'm holding shift right here and clicking the mask, which turns it on and off. It doesn't destroy your original artwork. The mask is just a separate element that you can turn on or off without losing any data. And there's nothing worse than creating an awesome design and knocking out a bunch of textures just to want to rebuild it, but not being able to do so. So with this mask selected right here, I'm going to hit Control L on a PC or Command L on a Mac, which brings up levels. And levels is a super powerful tool that you can use to really tweak the way the actual texture looks here. So I tend to almost always grab this middle bar, which kind of think of this as an overall contrast. And you can either move it down to the left side here, which will brighten things up a little bit as it reduces the actual effect of the mask, or you can push it to the right side here and it becomes much harsher. So I tend to kind of play around with this a little bit and then bring this far right one in, which just kind of sharpens everything up. And as you can see, I'm getting a ton of different flexibility from the way this texture looks. And if I went ahead and applied it, you can see that we now have a much, much more aggressive texture. This is something you really want to just play around with a whole bunch. It's a definite trial and error sort of way of working, but you can get an infinite more amount of flexibility from any texture you're using by using levels on the mask you create, particularly if the texture happens to be something like the one that we're working with right here that has a lot of mid-tones and gradients going on. So now with this one on, and now we have this one on the background here, turn on that mask. You can see we have a few different textures working in combination to create a very weathered effect. And oftentimes I'll just hit Control U on the actual layer right here to bring up hue saturation bring up Colorize, and kind of play around with this and just very subtly make changes here until you get a color combination that you think is interesting or is working particularly well. The more time you spend on this, the better the results tend to be because you can really find some pretty interesting, unique combinations like this blue on the rusty might not be a typical color combination, but it ends up with a pretty neat effect on this. And then just to make things a little bit more interesting, I like working with background textures. So I have this one right here in the background that does a pretty nice job of giving this a weathered effect in the background. I might even just change the coloration to kind of suit the new design here a little bit better, make it a little bit more subtle. And another thing I forgot to mention here, if I go back to this one, when you have a layer like this that's set to multiply, so I'm going to move this right here, changing the layer style from normal back into multiply. If you bring up levels on your original right here, I'm hitting Control L on a PC or Command L on a Mac, and there's the output levels button right here at the bottom. If you want to make this texture in the background here very tonal, you can just move this black bar at the bottom slowly towards the right. And as you can see, when you do that, it makes it very much so a tonal. And this will work if I change this color of the actual background here to be pretty much anything. Using the multiply layer will make it just match that tonality. It works almost like a transparency. So you can get a whole lot of flexibility there. And if I bring up levels once again with Control L or Command L, and I start bringing up the actual background darkness right here, and this is the background darkness. If you use the output level white and you push it like this, it ends up just kind of fading everything out a little bit. But you can go ahead and get that back. So that's also a really quick way to get a tonal texture for a background if you don't want to separate it to be a different color like this. In which case, if you're doing it like this, you can just hit hue saturation, make it a little bit brighter, kind of play around with it until you end up with a tonal texture that's working for your design. And as one last quick little tip here, sometimes like let's say I have this type layer right here and I want to add a secondary texture to it, but I don't want to knock it out because knocking it out, sometimes you can destroy your work, lose a bunch of time, it's not fun. What I tend to do is I make a folder right here with the folder icon and just drag your type layer into it. 
So now inside this folder is this particular work. I'm going to turn off this background just so we can see it a bit better. And you can see there's a layer right here with the layer mask applied to it. You can actually apply a mask to the folder as well. So I'm going to hit Control here or Command on a PC and select this background texture. And then with the actual folder right here selected, I'm going to hit that Add Layer Mask once again. And as you can see, we now have a secondary layer mask applied over the original. So if I were to turn off the original texture on this layer right here, you can see there's the new texture applied as well as the secondary texture on top of it. And I could go ahead and hit Control i or Command-I on a Mac to invert it. And I can also hit this chain link right here, which will decouple the texture from the actual folder. And then you can hit Control-T or Command-T, and you can go ahead and move around that actual texture so you can kind of get it fitted exactly how you think it looks best. It just adds a little bit more flexibility. In all this, you have two textures applied, still totally transparent, which particularly for things like t-shirt design where you're actually separating for a manual print process, this is really important because it makes life a lot easier on the separator. Then you can go ahead and just pop on some additional background textures here, pop this back on, and kind of overlay textures here. A lot of working with textures is just playing around until you end up getting an effect that you really think is interesting. Try not to overdo it. It's really easy to overstep it, like this texture is getting really busy now, as you can see. A lot of times, really subtle things tend to work the best because once you have too much stuff going on, it gets a bit muddled and crazy like this one's doing. And of course, you can always select the actual background textures like this one right here. Use the opacity and just knock it down if you really want to fade it in the background. But this kind of goes over the basics of how I tend to use textures. Realistically, the best way to create awesome textures in Photoshop is to have really good high quality source texture material and then just spend the time playing around, working with subtle color variations and overlaying multiple textures until you get something that's really unique and special. It definitely can be an art form on itself and takes a little bit of time to get really good at, but once you do, it can really change how your work looks and give it a much more organic feel. So hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more cool stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content coming for designers and illustrators. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.